this is an awakening. Awakening for all of us. And from my perspective, specifically with African Americans, those of us that engage year in and year out, I would, I would think most of us in here are progressives, is that correct? Any conservatives in this room? So we all voted Democratic? Come on, wake it up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, we vote for, I vote for the best candidate. I, I'm not. Are you an independent? No, um, we are Democrat. I'm Democrat. Vote I vote for the best candidate. Yeah, because, yes, yeah. because I feel that as black people, we, we stay with one party and it, it harms us. Yes. And as far as I'm concerned, we've not gotten anything. I'm from Maryland. Okay. Prince George's County, the majority black, most affluent, educated, blah, blah, county. But yet, uh, we have some of the same challenges as other major cities across the U.S. Um, in terms of uh, high unemployment, high crime, um, uh, high foreclosure. We have the highest foreclosure rate in the state of Maryland. And yet, all of our our administration is run by Democrats. Mm -hmm. uh, we do we did get a, a, a Republican governor that got elected in a state that's majority Democrat. But our county is um, all of our elected officials are majority Black, and all are Democrat, and they do us in every time. And the, Demo the Democratic Party only caters to ten percent of the party. That's the reason why you got a problem right now. Uh, because 90% of the, of the party is not being represented by the Democrats. There's an interesting, uh, in the last four election site cycles, the Democratic National Committee has only allocated less than 1% to African Americans. Less than 1%. Yet, we represent over 40% of the base, and black women even higher than that. So, that theme, what the sister just put up, is what we want to talk about today. We vote, we vote, we vote. And I live in Atlanta. Atlanta's a black city. Atlanta has the most million, black millionaires in any other location in this country. But there's places in Atlanta that's hard by. Oh, yeah. Okay. Same thing for shows can. Exactly. And uh, we have John Lewis District is one of the worst, and he's an esteemed scholar and elder. Okay. <laughs> And I'm not putting that on John Lewis. No, but you just okay. stating facts. But I'm stating facts. So my contention is this, is that as African Americans, we have been voting in the interest of everyone else and not our own. That's right. But I want to go back. Let's go back 100 years. Let's go back to Booker T. Washington. Booker T. Washington's political philosophy was, let's build our own. And then if we vote, we vote. To maintain our own. Du Bois had a different perspective. Du Bois's perspective won out the day. Not only is Du Bois known for the talented 10th, and I might add, we're at the talented 17th now, and we're still dealing with the same thing. So his ideology didn't necessarily come true. But the Du Bois position was, through Reconstruction, we got these laws. We were free. Black men could vote, not black women. We, I like to say, we were emancipated, not free. So the boys felt like we have to defend whatever political rights that we have gained, or they had gave us, like I said. So we vote just to defend. So we're always voting out of a defensive position to maintain so the politics of fear. It's what we've been voting for for the last hundred years because we want to make, we don't want to lose what we got. When the 60s came in the Civil Rights Movement and we got the Civil Rights Act, the Voting Rights Act, we didn't want to go back. We may be stepping back little by little, but we're voting based on what someone says. Okay, uh, I'm gonna, whether it's Trump, whether it was Bernie Sanders, whether it was Hillary Clinton, I'm bringing jobs back to your community. Let's be realistic, people. If you live in underprivileged, neighborhoods, what manufacturing plants are going to set up an education system, primarily the education system, is poor? Are any one of you going to move in an area where you have to put your children in failing schools? If you had a business, would you put your business? So what jobs are coming? None. So, but we still buy into, they're going to bring jobs back to the community. What we have here literally is 
in my opinion, there are political revolutions, but it's low to moderate income white people mad at rich white people. And it's happening on the Democratic side, and it's happening on the Republican side. And when we get swept up in that, if there's any positive change, just like in the new era when we got Social Security, Medicaid, and all these other areas, a rising tide didn't lift our boats. It wasn't until years later that we benefit from Roosevelt's policies. And this, we keep going into this cycle. So <clears throat> my belief is, is that we have to stop voting from a position of defense. Defense is fine. We know football analogy. You have to play defense until your offense can score. So I don't have a problem with playing defense, but we don't have no offensive game. Our offensive game is somebody else's offensive game. In DeKalb County, I live in DeKalb County, Georgia, and if you want a business license in DeKalb County, and you want a restaurant, your registration fee or business license is based on how many chairs are in your restaurant. That's politics. And we don't control that. How many people can open up restaurants? And if it's that way for restaurants, imagine what it is for a bookstore. I have a bookstore. It's about 10 feet long. I have to pay $300 for a license. That's politics. So how many young entrepreneurs can afford to go in business without just, I mean, you still have your structure. You still have your goods. You still have your infrastructure you have to put together, but you have to pay the state a certain amount of money. Yet, we're not getting anything back. But more importantly, I think the missing point is, is that I think we all heard the term taxation without representation. But do we really know what that means? Is we pay our taxes, whether it's sales, property, income, but we don't control our tax dollars. In Atlanta, where they, they closed the schools and our neighborhoods are in Chicago, I don't know where everyone else is from, but that money is being diverted for upper echelon. That's our money. That's our public dollars. And we have black officials. In Atlanta, we have black aldermen, black council people, black mayor, yet our dollars are still being spent. See, politics is, is you have the ideologies, the competing ideologies, but it's really based on how the money is spent. The ideology is to justify how that money is spent. And the big, and our neighborhoods are in Chicago, I don't know where everyone else is from, but that money is being diverted for upper echelon. That's our money. That's our public dollars. And we have black officials. In Atlanta, we have black aldermen, black council people, black mayor, yet our dollars are still being spent. See, politics is, is you have the ideologies, the competing ideologies, but it's really based on how the money is spent. The ideology, is to justify how that money is spent. And the basis of it all is politics is the management system of your economy. So there's this big buy black movement. Everybody wants to buy black, but they're missing something. We can't really have a sustaining buy, buy black movement unless we build a political system around it. It's just human nature. We get caught up in money and politics. The problem is, is that we're not grooming selecting, funding our own. We're not building in our own little neighborhoods. It's not national, it's local. Local politics is what affects all of us each and every single day. What happens in Washington doesn't necessarily, I mean, there is some effect, but not nearly as much as what happens locally. So in our own communities, we have, we have these discussions all the time with people in our own community. Why not build coalitions? And out of that coalition, one of these people has, a, has political aspirations. I can say, we think you should run. And we're going to collectively put some money behind you. But we got to first, we have to build a platform. What is it that our community needs? Detroit's needs is different than my needs in Lithonia, which is different than your needs in Chicago. It's not all the same. I live in the suburbs. Who lives in the inner city? Anybody live in the inner city here? So your, your needs are different than mine in the suburbs. I mean, I'm in the suburbs and you're in the city. So we have to start locally. We have to, 
I'm sorry. Um, you, work together or? you have that, but see, here's the problem, is that we have to redefine politics because more of us, we just said earlier, our own politicians are not really necessarily taking care of our own business, right? So a lot of us still believe that it's business as usual. Just like you have a lot of people that's upset with the Democratic Party because it's not coming back, it's business as usual. So if we don't first start to redefine what's important to us, it begins with us, what our needs are in our own, com in our own community and build a platform and then run on that platform. So how, how do we break the fear of black people It happens all over. It's, it's just not business people. In this past national election, Hillary Clinton got 26% of the eligible voting population, and Donald Trump got 23% of the eligible population. At least 49% of the el eligible population not engaging. You extrapolate that out in the black community, those numbers are even larger. So most of us sit there and we got mad at our brothers and sisters who didn't vote, right? I didn't get mad. You know why? Because we haven't given them a reason to vote for. If your condition, if your condition has been for decades, what reason do I have to vote? I'm in a, my business is in a little small town. It's, it's 2,000, uh, population 2,000, one square mile. In this last election, 97 percent, 97 people voted. 97 people voted. And where is this at? It's in Lothonia. It's a little small, little small town. It's been a depressed town for years. How many registered voters in that? Uh, I think the mayor said about 900 of them are registered voters. Mm -hmm. Okay. But it's been a depressed, it, nothing has changed for the residents in this town for decades. Why vote? Is it predominantly black? It's all. It's ninety-seven percent black with a crime rate less than three percent. Wow. What, what we do back then, uh, first of all, oh, One second. Oh, I want to get to her. She's been raising her hand. I, I think the disservice is that the focus, is, especially with this last election, was the presidential. Mm -hmm. And of course, the two-party system has always been something that is just thought of as Democrat or Republican. There's no mm -hmm. alternate choice when you're so disgruntled or not feeling either party. But the biggest disconnect is that there's too much of a focus on the presidential mm -hmm. vote, mm -hmm. where getting our people to understand there is 17 some odd different things that you are voting for. Mm -hmm. There are amendments. There's such, You touched on it earlier when you talked about the local, understanding that there are local elections that are going on that are are a bigger picture mm -hmm. in the elections that are going not, not on. And you Most. only yeah. hear so much in the media, and any time you go to rallies or anything, all you hear about is the presidential uh -huh. nominees. How many people have gone ever to their city council meetings? That's good. That's, this is more than I usually give. <laughs> but that's why you're here, right? Right. But in this, I, I wanted to follow up on when I was thinking about this little town that my business is in. Uh, we go to all the city, it's, it's a bunch of young people, who, young black people who opened up businesses. We go to all the city council meetings, and there's three aldermen that are up for re-election this year. And although I don't, I'm not a resident, my business is in there, what we're doing is we're, we've already selected three candidates to run for those aldermen positions, for those councilmen positions. But more importantly, what's fascinating is the residents that have not been voting but we have conversation, engage them, and we just show the little bit of interest in them and find out what their needs are versus us telling them what their needs should be. Because that's usually what politicians do when they're talking to you, what they're gonna do versus asking you what you need, right? It's like, 
you could just see literally that light bulb go off in their head and like now they're interested and they're engaged and they're coming to the city council meeting. Uh, well, that's a good point because, you know, um, from Prince George County, this is like that across America, but civic engagement mm -hmm. is very important mm -hmm. because black people, like Sandy said, don't like to get into the political game mm -hmm. because we elect people that look like us but they don't represent us. They don't represent us. And we also teach, you know, you know, our base, you know, don't vote for the party, vote based on issues. We gotta yes. vote based on issues. And it has to be on our issues. issues. If we get hung up on, yes, party, on party, we'll lose every time. Let me, let me say this to you. Forget how the, the Democrat, progressive, Republican, conservative, conservative, let's not think their narrative, right? Okay. I would probably in this room, um, I could say that the black conscious community is actually aligned with more conservative viewpoints than they are progressive. That's right. Right? Okay. And then we have progressives within the black community. And we have those that don't engage. So we literally, based on our own black ideologies, we have a left and a right. That's right. Right? right. So let's not let, <clears throat> but <clears throat> getting back to the Boyce, Booker, Marcus Garvey, which I believe got it right, okay? And he got it right because he built businesses, but then he built a political system around those businesses to support the economy. Now, what's happened over the last hundred years is that the black community has fell in one of those three camps, and we're still fighting with each, with each other. We're still debating whether we should unify under one. It's okay to have a left and right. You have to have a balance. There's a balance in everything. But what we failed to do, because I think that Booker, Du Bois, and, and Garvey were all correct, but it was incomplete. And what was incomplete is that they didn't find what they all share in common. We all have the same, same common goals, right? Malcolm X, Martin Luther King in the 60s, along with the Black Panther Party, Martin couldn't have achieved everything that he achieved without, without Malcolm, without the Black Panther Party. Because if white folks didn't want to talk to Malcolm or the Black Panther Party, so they had to talk to somebody they deemed more reasonable. And all the civil rights movement and King had to do was toe the line. And they toe the line and that's how we got legislation. So we have to get beyond our own political differences and we got to find commonality and it begins it begins with us i don't care if you're far progressive and i'm center right or i'm center because i know that we want the same thing du bois booker uh garvey king uh malcolm x we can go on down the line they all want the same thing better than for our people. right it's just that we get caught up in our own ideologies and that's we get caught up in the differences in our ideology and we can't unite around one thing instead of finding what's common in our ideology and accepting the fact that there is a left and a right within us. And then we define on our own what our political agenda is, what being right or, or conservative or uh, liberal for black people and then build a platform around that versus us arguing with each other, because that's all we do. I'm, I'm running up to this election, it was ugly in our own community. Forget what Trump and all them was doing, how we were, I mean, we were coons. I mean, I was seeing some of the ugliest things on Facebook that we were calling each other because we had a difference in political opinion when it didn't matter which one of those, uh, those politi politicians got elected, it wasn't gonna benefit our community in the first place. And we're fighting each other, and it was crazy. And it was, it was because of uh, Lynn just walked in the door. Hi. She called me, and several other people called me, and was like, what do we do now? And it was because of that, I decided to write a book on this and then have this seminar, because it, it just got too ugly. And if we don't stop this madness, it's, we're going to, our children are going to inherit this, and they're going to inherit this, and we keep this vicious cycle. We all want the same thing. It's okay to have difference in opinion, but let's sit down. I wanted this to be an open forum and that we discuss it versus me just sitting up here and talking to say, what do we have in common? 
and what can we build on and how can we go back in our communities and build coalitions, but not build coalitions just with people who think like us within our community. A black Republican in some cases is really not, doesn't have to be a bad person because they think that we can pull ourselves up from our own bootstraps and that we need less government interference. That's not necessarily, it. We, we do need to pull ourselves up, right? And then I also understand because of the injustices that happened over the last 500 years that some feel that uh, Democrats, they feel like the government should help us because it's an uneven uh, playing field. So I understand both. We can get both. I'm a proponent for charter schools only if they allow us to have our own curriculum. I've traveled all over the country and gone to African-centered charter schools and the children are doing exceptionally well, but I see state after state tear these schools down because they don't like that, that there's a church in Detroit, and I can't think of the name of the church, and you might be able to help me, that sits in, it's a, a successful church that sits in one of the worst neighborhoods in Detroit, and there were elders around that church that didn't have water. The city had cut off the water because of not paying it. And the church sits right there, and this organization confronted the church on Sunday morning about how do you sit right here, and people right around you, I'm not, I'm not talking about young people, I'm talking about elders, don't have running water. And it got kind of ugly because the members of New Era Detroit, they were cursing, and some people got caught up in the cursing. I didn't get caught up in the cursing, I got caught up in what they were saying. Because how can you be a church? In other words, the church now has got to the point where it only helps those within it. That's right. Right? right. So, if I'm, so around you is, is suffering, okay? So the church ultimately, because they were confronted and it went uh, viral on YouTube, the church went out and they started paying some of these water bills. But it should never have to get to that. So if I have a problem with church and status, what is the position of the church today? Uh, I think Bill Cosby asked a, a, a brilliant question. They said, why Nation of Islam brothers can go in the worst part, part of the hood and get respect? But church elders can't do the same. We become afraid of each other. As, as elders, we have a responsibility. We can't be afraid of our own. I'm not saying be stupid. <laughs> I'm not implying that. But these young people, I'm a... I'm around young people all the time, and I'm encouraged. I don't see the mayhem that we see on the news, or I don't live in Chicago, because I'm encouraged because they're about trying to um, build businesses, they're about family, and they're trying to do the right thing. There's a lot more of them than there are those of us out there shooting, but they, they're looking for guidance. They're looking for clarity. What, what are your thoughts on, you know, the NAACP? National Urban League, um, the Hundred Black Men, you know, these organizations, the sororities, fraternities that, that are organized, but, you know, somehow. I think everybody has their role. They have an audience. And people that they speak to and they move based, those people move based on that audience. But I don't think that we can always leave everything up to the traditional black organizations. This is a new era. There's a reason why young people aren't flocking to these organizations. They have a different mindset. Yeah, but I always believe that if everybody do a little, nobody has to do a lot. Well, that's why I first said there's a place for everyone, and, and you're absolutely right. Each one of us, if we do one thing, it's a lot more than, that's going to, a lot more things can get done, even if it's supporting a black business. Even if it's taking $20, and supporting a, a nonprofit that is actually doing grassroots in our community. I'm not talking about necessarily the big giants, that's all well and fine, but when we support the local struggling 501c3 that is out there in the community with just, 20, if we do $20 a month, you'd be surprised how much help, impact, impact that that has on that community. Mm -hmm. and they are 
are voiced, and so when they need them to kind of represent something or be the black face, these organizations really, who to me, don't represent the grassroots, but uh, publicly uh, and in the white world, they are our voice, and, and I think that's killing us. I mean, truly, well, well, truly killing us. And, and these structures, and these structures have been set. So when we create these organizations like the NAACP and some of the others, they're following the structure, right? And if the structure isn't helping us and you're following in that same path, building a black organization, it's going to inevitably do the same thing that the establishment is doing anyway, not really helping. They played their role, they have done some things, and they may continue to play their role, but it, it's, I don't like to say it's a time for new leadership, but it's a time for a new direction because sometimes we sit and we wait for a leader to arise. You know, it's like sometimes I feel like we're waiting for someone to rise to tell us how to think and how to act when we're all born brilliant and have been able to have critical thinking skills on our own. And we're, we, each, each election cycle, whether it's local, state, or federal, we're waiting for someone else to tell us how we should vote or a placard with nothing but D's down it that you go in. It's, it's, I sit back and I listen to all the people that were screaming about police reform and the killing of our young black men and women. Well, guess who nominates a police chief? Your local politicians. <laughs> if you want to change what's happening in your community, you change who sits on that. You change the mayor, but you can't stop at the mayor. You got to change who sits on the city council. You want to stop it because they, the mayor appoints it and the city council nominates the police chief. So, but we're not thinking that. If, if you're worried about sentencing, how many of us have voted for judges that we really have no idea what that judge's ideology is? <laughs> they just have a D on their day. <laughs> And, and, exactly. And in Prince George's County, when you vote for a judge, that judge is in there for 15 years. See? But we're worrying, we, we're, we're, we're sitting here, we see the problems in our community, but we're actually either voting or non voting or voting ignorantly on these same people who control the okay. things that <laughs> affect our quality of life. Our quality of life. So it goes back to. You know, we all are endowed with this, and, and Google is a wonderful thing. <laughs> it really is. You know, it's, it's not like you can, but if you don't wait to election cycles to engage in the political system, you'll know what you're dealing with when, when election time comes around, and that's part of the problem. We tap out mm -hmm. after the election. But so often our people say, our ancestors, our ancestors died for us to have a right to vote. Our ancestors died for us to have a right to have a voice. That's what they died for. And what we've done is we said, okay, I'm gonna go to the I'm gonna go to the ballot, but I have no more responsibility after that. After that. Hell, I don't have any responsibility before that because I really don't know who and why I'm voting. I'm just voting because our ancestors died. That's not a reason to vote. It's not. Or Again, and I, and I want to stress this, we have to give people who don't vote a reason to vote. Yeah. I'm not mad at them. But well, one thing for sure, since Donald Trump is in there, it's just like he stirred up a hornet's nest here. It's an and awakening. What shake, and what shakes out of that, if we as black people is not ready, we're going to be pushed further back than what we are now in the next four years. As black people, what we have to do is first we have to bring the noise level down about yeah. Trump. Because right now we're caught up in emotion. It's an emotional thing, right? I think it's a good thing right. that Trump is in there because well, he flushed out. He he upset the apple cart. Exactly. He flipped it over. He flipped on both it over. Sides. So we have to calm down, right? We have to bring it down. And he's. It, it's, I, I know how because we see what's going on, but we have work to do. And and we can't do the work if we're caught up in an emotional state. That, that's really what I'm saying. I'm not saying don't get emotional. What I'm saying is understand that we have work to do. Okay? 
everyone had an opinion. It, this, this, everyone had an opinion on Sanders versus Hillary, Hillary versus Trump, Trump versus the world. Everyone, I mean, I've seen so many opinions. It's like you know you can't even keep up with them anymore. So, again, although I pay attention, because I grew up paying attention, so it's just natural to me. I'm not getting caught up in the fury. Because when you get caught up in the fury, you never know what's going on on the back side. See, while we're looking at Trump, I'm more afraid of Paul Ryan in the House yes. of Representatives. Yes. <laughs> right? See, while, while, while we're screaming, impeach Trump, I'm looking at right. that Pence, right? Yeah. Hey, do you know about Mike Pence? Yeah. <laughs> okay. So. And while we got that going on, I want to know what's happening on my local level. Exactly. Exactly. So, so let's bring it down. Trump. Trump is going to be there at least two years, at least two years, and, and maybe four. So, so he, he's there, right? The best that we can do is pay attention to the midterm elections and make sure that there's balance, I mean, from a, on a national level. That's, that's all we can hope for is that we get through that period of time. But more importantly is the message that I want to relay is let's start building coalitions, and not just coalitions of people who believe in our political ideology. Bring coalitions of people who want to do work in our community. I mean, real work. Well, how do we teach our people to be nonpartisan um, when it comes to building economic development? Developing a, a black agenda. Because we have a congressional black caucus for the state of Maryland with no agenda. So they're in Annapolis representing our interests with no agenda. You, you answered to me, you answered your own question, I think. And, and, and because these are politicians that we put in place with no agenda. But it, it, who, no who, put, who put them there? No agenda, no we, put them we, can't, we, can't, we can't get them out unless they die. What, did the tea, what, what, was the, what, was, what was the success of the Tea Party in 2010? Well, they, they organized. They're organized. And did what with that organization? They enforced. And, and, and did they, they not? Did they, they, they called they it tea, they tea Party the candidate. They well, they in did. other words, they ran somebody. They ran their they ran their candidate, and they put that candidate in office. They laid out the blueprint. We, we as a race, I, as a group, cannot do that. Well, the first thing that we have to do is stop saying cannot. And I don't cannot. mean that disrespectfully. That I don't mean that disrespectfully. Mm -hmm. What I mean is, is that when we put that out in the universe, that's what keeps happening, right? So there is a way. It may not be an easy way, but again, it requires work. We, we, can't no, we can't afford to no longer sit on the sideline. We really can't. I have grandchildren. My kids are grown, but I have grandchildren. So what is that saying to them? Are they going to, you know, when we talk about the Black Lives Movement, that age bracket, we left this to, for them to fight. You know, I'm, I'm born in 60, so those are that, that's in my age bracket, you know, we. My parents fought in the Civil Rights Movement or was a part of the Nation of Islam or, or Black Panther Party. I'm from that generation. It skipped right over, the struggle skipped right over my generation and now these children are having, these, what I call children, are having to deal with this madness. So are we gonna wait, we're gonna skip two more generations because we keep saying we can't. Yeah. And, and I don't mean that disrespectful, is we have to change how we think. And we have to figure out, we're sending of voters within a community, yet yeah, yeah. they have yeah. one of the highest per income capitas right. nationally. And, and I have a good friend that I grew up with that's uh, Chinese, and November 9th after Trump got elected, there was very little talk of the Chinese, co Chinese community about Donald Trump, but that's all we could talk about. Their business as usual, because their politics is local, right? And they've established, they built a system that allowed their local economies to continue to grow despite who the president is. It doesn't matter who the president is because they protected and, themselves. And, and they set up in the, in the black community and nowhere in the world the Koreans and the Asian who get more set up in the Jewish community. Because but they, that's, they, all, that's a whole you know, nother can of words. <laughs> I don't do it personally. See, I mean, I'm not going to say that I don't like Chinese food. And I don't want to I don't want to belabor the Chinese thing, but I'm not me, I'm not going to a Chinese restaurant to get chicken wings or fish when the best people that could cook chicken and fish is my folks. So.